Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at 10 mods for your D&D 5th edition games in Roll20. Now, if you're not familiar with what a mod is, it's a script written by the community which can be used by anyone with a pro account. And these mods extend Roll20's existing functionality. You can easily add special effects when your wizard casts a fireball, or you can automatically restore HP on your character sheet when your character drinks a healing potion, and a whole lot more. So let's start things off with a bang, or rather, with a kaboom. The Kaboom mod lets you create explosions that can scatter tokens around the battlefield. You can specify how far the tokens should be thrown, what kind of special effects should be applied, and if the explosions should only affect tokens of a certain size. You can also create implosions, which are great for gravity effects and whirlpools. Next up is the Radar script. Radar lets players detect things on the map, so your paladin can use their divine sense to detect fiends, undead, or celestials. Or your wizard could sense what school of magic was radiating from a particular item. Detected items are briefly highlighted on screen and can also be rendered in this radar screen in Roll20's chat. You also can display a table giving precise location information about where the target is so that your player knows exactly where the sensed item is located. Smart AoE is a mod that makes it very easy to determine which creatures are going to be hit by an area effect spell, and then it can also apply special effects to that spell, can automatically make the saving throws for your targets, and automatically apply damage to them. In this case, we can see that my Burning Hands spell did 15 points of fire damage to the two skeletons that failed the saving throw, and it did 7 damage to the one who passed. That damage was automatically applied to the skeleton's tokens, and the ones who are now at 0 HP have had their tokens marked as dead. This speeds up combat and increases your overall immersion. If you've got a rogue who likes to scout ahead of the party, the It's a Trap mod will automatically detect traps for them based on their passive perception score. Once a trap is detected, a message is placed in chat and the trap itself is highlighted on screen for your players. From there, your rogue can disable the trap, or if they've failed to detect it, automatically spring it, in which case the attack and damage rolls for the trap will be automatically performed and displayed in chat. Next up, Aura Tint Health Colors gives your players a visual indication of how damaged a particular monster is. The monster starts out with a green aura when it's at full health, and that aura gradually fades to yellow as they approach half their hit points. And then, as they near death, the aura begins to turn red, so your players know exactly which creatures are in the worst shape and which ones they should focus their attacks on. The status info mod is great for applying conditions to a particular creature. So in this case, if our orc is frightened, we select the frightened status and the mod will automatically pop a card into chat reminding us what this condition means and it applies a marker to their token so we remember that this is the orc that's frightened. And later on, if this effect wears off, it's a simple matter of running the mod again and clearing the conditions from that token. If you're running combat for a group of monsters, then rolling initiative for them individually can be a tedious chore. Group initiative allows you to select a group of monsters and then roll initiative for all of them all at once. The individual initiatives are logged here in chat and they're also automatically added to the turn order as well. This speeds up combat and keeps the game moving. When you've got a bunch of the same monster in combat, sometimes it's difficult to discern which one is actually active. The Turn Marker 1 script allows you to put an orange glyph around the active creature and then you can advance between creatures using these EOT buttons to end their turn or you can jump back to the previous creature using the POT button. This way your players always know which monster is active and then the players also get a reminder when it's their turn. Now these last two are what I consider the Swiss Army Knives of mods and they're the first ones I add to any of my games. The first, Token Mod, allows you to create macros that will set values related to tokens. So here we see that my Warlock does not have any attributes set to their bars and they don't have any dynamic lighting settings enabled. By using Token Mod, I can create a macro that sets all that for me. So with the click of a button, I now have my dynamic lighting settings turned on and I have the bars linked to the appropriate values from their character sheet. 
The final mod, Chat Set Atra, allows you to update values on a particular character sheet from a macro. So here we see my bard Fladaria currently has 11 hit points. Let's say she's going to drink a healing potion, and she's going to drink a greater healing potion. Using Chat Set Atra, I can have that healing automatically applied to her character sheet so that her player doesn't need to go in and update her hit points after drinking the potion. So we were at 11 HP, she drank the greater healing potion, recovered 13 hit points, and that was automatically added back into her character sheet. More information about each of these mods is down in the video description. Check them out, and if there are other mods that you found helpful, leave a note in the comments. In the meantime, folks, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and happy gaming.